below. What we're going to look at in this video is we're going to look at the content and purpose of web pages. So moving beyond structure, we're going to actually look at the things that are in a website, so the content of it, and what the purpose of it is. So each website you look at will have a purpose. It will be trying to get you to do something, to be entertained, to be enticed, to buy something, to read up, to get information on something. And so they're filled with contents that either an individual, so if it's an individual's website or Facebook page or something like that, um, is trying to deliver, whether it's the one of a company or just one of an organization, such as a charity or a, a sporting group or whatever it may be. And these are basically tools which they use to communicate with your visitors. So like when you go on your Facebook page, you're trying to communicate with your friends who go on your page or on the feeds that you go onto. So through that, you are basically, you have, a, you have content and your purpose is to inform your friends of everything that it is you're doing. Now, whether or not you go on, on Facebook or other sites for that purpose to tell others what you're doing or to be entertained is purely up to the purpose of the site and what the content is there to do. So by analyzing this, coupled with techniques as well, and techniques will help you to get a fair idea of the sorts of things that are um, part of the content of a particular page, then you get a bit of an idea for what the purpose is, and then you have a lot of things you can actually discuss. So through all these things, you have basically the purpose of the page. So your content is where you start, and then your purpose is where you finish. Now, visitors are people who are interested or curious about whatever the content is. So if you're looking, again, we'll use the classic example of your Facebook page, then the people who visit your Facebook page are people who are going to be interested in the things you have to say. They're your friends, or at least some of them are. But the things that, they, that you put up there are things that you think your friends are going to be interested in. So things about your life, things about your, your friends, your hobbies, or just something that you've seen which you might find funny. All those things basically link to the purpose of what your page is trying to do. And it's the same as with what any other site is trying to do. They put a whole heap of things on their web page, whether it be information, um, sales, even advertising, and then all those things add up to a, com a complete package, basically the purpose. So let's have a look at the process of how you would analyze it. All right, so when you have a look at structure of a web page, things such as layout, visuals, text, and tone, you get lots of little pieces, basically parts of a jigsaw puzzle that make up the whole thing of what your of what the website you're studying is. So when you have a look at the website, you see lots of basically little pieces. They are all pieces of it. And through all of these different pieces, you have basically the purpose. So when you add up everything, it's basically something which, if you, when you have a look at it, and when you have a look at it closely, and things such as text and layout particularly, but also the images which are there to support the message and reinforce the message, and especially the tone, the, the idea that it's been written in such a way or it's been put together in such a way to make you feel a certain thing or make you want to do a certain thing, or even if it's just a case that they want you to go in a particular direction. All those things, all those pieces of the puzzle will help you to get an idea of what the purpose of the page is. And it is your job and your response to talk about how these techniques create content, create purpose, or create an effect. So an effect it could be something like, for instance, if you're looking at any smoking ad, and you're looking at an anti-smoking web page. Both of those things are immediately trying to make you feel like you should, or you should get someone you know to stop smoking. And it's purely through the layout, the, the images that it uses, particularly the very graphic images that it quite often use, and the kinds of text, the really persuasive sorts of text that a lot of um, websites like that will use. So if you have a look at the image to my right, buy me is a very, it's a very simply stated message. It's big, it's bold, it's buy me, it's very simple. And so through analyzing that message, we get, okay, in this case, it's fairly obvious, but in most websites, it's not all that much different from just something as simple as buy me. Because through all these images together and all this content, it's pretty much saying exactly the same thing, buy me, go on me, have fun looking at me. 
that sort of thing. So you're going to keep coming back and the people who have built this site can keep sending advertising dollars there or can keep people coming back or can get more people supporting their ideas and their, and their causes, all those sorts of things. All right, so before you start, what do you do before you start looking at one? Okay, so thinking about websites can basically give you an idea of what designers use to be attractive to their audiences. So essentially, like advertising, like when you look at a bus stop um, ad or a billboard, immediately they're trying to stand out to someone. They're trying to appear in such a way that they're attractive to their audience. So when you go to like something like Facebook, and we'll use that example again and again, what element of it is attracting you to go there? Basically, well, let's have a look at the answer. It, like you, it values delivering content added by your friends. So yes, Facebook has advertising on it. So what? Most of the content that you'll see is basically, it's the things that your friends or that you have put on there. And the advertising is sort of something that orbits that. So yes, it is trying to sell advertising, of course, it always is. Same as most other websites. But the thing is, the content and the way that the purpose of the site is being arranged and the way it's attractive to you is that it appears at least to share the same values of connecting with friends just like you do. So the reason why people go on that site again and again is because of the fact that the it's attractive to people to be able to talk about things with their friends without having to actually cross rivers or roads or boundaries to go off and actually physically see them. And to do things which you couldn't do in the past with old technology such as the phone or or even something as dinosauric as, as a letter. So having a look at all those things, you immediately get what's attracting someone to that page. And obviously if it's something for a cause, then people who are going to be attracted to that website are going to be people who support that particular cause. And the same as if, if I go to a website for a product that I've just bought, what's attracting me there is because I want to know more about it or because it's broken and I need an idea of how to fix it. All those things. So using techniques is basically, as I said before, it's part of the pieces of the puzzle. So if you can talk about the different pieces, you can basically talk about the sort of the things that they make up when you join them all together. So discussing the way that visuals, text, layout, and tone are arranged is basically well, something that will tell you a lot about who it's for. And a lot of your discussions about websites will be about who. Who are the sorts of people we want visiting the site? And it is essentially, it's mixing things together. It's a puzzle where you link all these ideas, all of these different elements of text and layout and tone and visuals. Mix them all together and then you'll get basically the idea of what the web page is doing. Or a simple equation would be techniques times many of them equals your content. And through your content, you will get your purpose as well. So having all those things and having them all basically joined together, so you have lots of paragraphs about lots of different ideas, but at the same time, you've got to talk about how they create content and also how they create a purpose through all that content and through all that layout and visuals and text as well. So how do you analyze it? Okay, so you've got all the pieces, you, you've sort of started to join them up. How do you be critical about them? Okay, so it is a fundamental step about thinking critically, and that's what you've got to do. You've got to think about how a website's working. Well, basically, it's about understanding why websites are targeted towards some and not others. So if you're going to a, a website for a, um, let's say, a female's clothing website or for a, a store with clothing directed at young female shoppers, then basically the website's going to be designed in a way that's going to attract to their kinds of buyers, the people who would want to go and buy ladies' clothes on the website, as opposed to perhaps men who may not want to go on the website so much. Now that's not necessarily discriminating against one group or another. That's just purely them through the purpose and through all the things they're trying to get um, the people who go on that website to do is essentially what the purpose of the page is and through all those pieces that you'll see, you'll see that it's being put together and composed in such a way that it's attractive to women, it's attractive to the people who will buy their products, 
and not necessarily attractive to people who wouldn't. And that's not a bad thing, that's just basically them knowing their audience, knowing what appeals to them. And if you try to appeal to everyone, then you, you have a possibility, and often this happens, where you lose a lot of people who you're trying to actually appeal to, the kinds of people who would actually um, want to see what it is you have to offer. So that's why they have to target them in such a way. So thinking of it, like I mentioned before, like a, a ladies clothing chain would be aiming their products at the kinds of ladies who they want wearing their clothes. So it's essentially, it's a target audience. That's what you've got to be looking at. So like hitting that bullseye, you've got to go directly towards your target audience and what your target audience wants. Even if it's something like an entertainment website, okay, certain ones are appealing at certain audiences. So a webcomic site, for instance, is going to be aimed at generally a younger sort of audience, those sorts of people who visit those sorts of websites. The advertising there is going to be advert, adverts aimed at younger sorts of people. People who advertise on websites want to know who the sorts of people are who go on that website so they can sell directly to them as opposed to trying to sell to everyone because it means that they spend their money a lot more uh, wisely if they do it that way. If they're trying to advertise everywhere and their audience is only going on about the tenth of the sites, it's not very, it's not very, uh, it's not a very efficient way of making money for them. Let's put it that way. So having a look at all those things, you can actually have a look at the purpose of what it is it's trying to do. So let's put it all together now. Now, your main ideas will relate to the purpose. So it could be to advertise, it could be to direct sell. So a website that's purely trying to sell a product. It might be informing, providing knowledge, something like a government site or just a site for a product that you may have just bought. It may be to lobby. So lobbying is basically a, a protest or something for a charity or something like that, trying to get people to change, trying to get people to, um, support their particular cause to, to help others. It could be, as I mentioned before, to entertain. So just purely for the purposes of browsing when you're bored, all those things. To educate, so to um, give people information, give people facts, like a fact sheet. It could be just simply something like a service, which will help um, those who go on it with a particular um, thing that they might need, so whether it be a a site that allows people to create their own web pages or whatever it is, and also support. So, as I mentioned before, if you buy a product or something like that, it might give you a bit of support for it. So, downloads, product information, manuals, all those sorts of things. And through all those things, you can basically not only be able to work backwards from those sorts of things. So, if it's a custom support website, and it's very obvious that it's a custom support website, then you look at all the things about how it's trying to be helpful to its customers. So if you're looking at a, a thing for an Apple product like an iPod or something and you're looking at their support page, then there's going to be all these links to help people not only get to know their, their, their iPod but to or their device that they've just bought. There will be things that will teach them about it. There will be things that will help them when they have a problem with it, when they need repairs, all those sorts of things. And it will direct each person to the sorts of things that they might be looking for on that particular page. All right, so now we've got everything. Let's have a look at how it's going to interact with their desired audience. And that's basically what it's trying to do. So whether these audiences are their customers, their stakeholders, bored teenagers, in the case of a lot of websites, or just concerned citizens, it will stand out. So as I said before, when you work backwards, you'll pretty much see straight away what the website is for. And generally it's fairly obvious what a website is for because it will tell you, it will show you, it will illustrate to you who this is directed at. If, it, if you don't know, if it's confusing to you who this website's for, then obviously the web designer hasn't done a very good job at it because immediately they use things like stereotypes, they use um, very simple design principles to talk to directly who they want to be talking to and for others who may be visiting to know immediately who they might be talking to. That's not to say that they are trying to exclude those who they're not targeting. It's just basically saying that it's it's aimed at one particular group and you should be able to tell that just by looking at it. And basically the language and the techniques that it uses, so if it uses a particular kind of jargon or um, a particular kind of language or way of speaking, 
then again, that's one of those things that will stand out to you as being for a particular audience. And then it's just about putting all the pieces together, finding the techniques, looking at how they create content and then finding the purpose of it and being able to discuss it and analyze it. And that's basically all you need to do. That's essentially the, the heart of everything you need to know about learning a web page. So on that revelation, we'll, we'll leave it there. There's not much else I can really tell you about the sorts of um, content and purpose of a web page. However, if you do need to go back over it, make sure you have a look at the video again. Ask someone if you're in doubt, but otherwise, I will see you next time. Thank you.